Welcome to Mrs. Taylor's math class. Today we will be working on FTCE Elementary Education K-6 Math Subtest Competency 4 Knowledge of Measurement, Data, and Statistics. Now let's begin class. The following circle graph shows the results of a survey of 150 students. How many students chose baseball as their favorite sport? So to complete this question, you would have to multiply um, 150 students by the percent of students that chose baseball. In this case, there were 20, sorry, my pen is not working. In this case, 20% of the students chose baseball. So you would multiply 150 times 20%. You would need to change your percent to a decimal, 0 0.20, and then proceed with your multiplication. Point zero, zero. This is going to be 0, 0, 0. Placeholder, 0, 10, carry the 1, and this would be a 3. Add it together, you get 0, 0, 0, 3. This means two decimal places. So the decimal place starts here. I'll move two places. And so my answer would be 30, or in this case, answer choice C. Which of the following shapes is on the missing side? So the missing side is in um, number four. And of course, it's here where the arrow is. If you notice the smiley face is on the side and the eyes are... I guess to the right. So I'm gonna go back to number three and I'm gonna look here. And so this shape was basically transformed over here and it looks something like this. I guess it would look like that, but better. So um, to me, if I, <laughs> I'm, I have to be honest, if I was going to pick a shape, it would probably be C, but they say it's A. I'm going to go with it, but C looks more like it to me. But um, I, I, I would not pick B. I would not pick B at all because the black portion is not um, near the face of the smiley face. And then same thing about D. I wouldn't pick that. So... I would have struggled between A and C, and I have to be honest, I probably would have chose C. So I probably would have got this question wrong. I'm just going to be honest. I'm being real. But they say the answer is A, so we'll go with A. A student brought a small apple for lunch. Which measurement would best describe the mass of the small apple? Okay, to answer this question, you would have to know the difference between uh, all of the prefixes that they have before the word grams. So when you talk about milligrams, the one thing that I think of when I think of milligrams, I think of like uh, pills. So if you're taking like an ibuprofen, they say what, 500 milligrams of ibuprofen, you know that is just a small pill. That is not the size of an apple. Um, for centigrams, Centigrams is like, it's a, a word that is a, a regular word, but it's not used any, in any type of measurement. So I wouldn't even pick centigrams as one of my options. Um, kilograms is for larger items, um, such as like a watermelon or um, I guess like pineapples or just other large amounts. And I know... This might be a bad example, but, um, you know, I guess when they talk about um, doing like a drug bust, they say, oh, we got so many kilos of whatever drug it is. So we know that's a large amount of, uh, of an item. So wouldn't pick kilo either. So for a small apple, 100 grams would be the right answer. Estimate the mass of a slice of bread. So in order to do this question, you would need to know the difference between grams, milligrams, kilograms, and ounces. So let's just um, 
go with, let's start with milligrams. Milligrams, again, um, can be, you can think of milligrams as a measurement, measurement for a pill um, or a tablet that you're taking, um, some type of medicine. For kilograms, again, this is going to be a large amount. And just to give you an idea, 25 kilograms is like equivalent to um, 55 pounds. So you already know a slice of bread is not going to weigh that. And then you have ounces. Um, 25 ounces is different than 25 fluid ounces. But to give you an idea, 25 ounces is almost the same as saying um, 1.5 pounds. So when it comes to the um, mass of a slice of bread, you're going to go with 25 grams. And just to give you an idea for that, that is equivalent to 0 0.05 pounds. So that's by more of more the weight of a slice of bread. The math supervisor polled the teachers in the school district concerning which day of the week to hold a staff development workshop. The results showed that 20% of the of the teachers preferred Monday, 15% preferred Tuesday, 10% preferred Wednesday, 25% preferred Thursday, and 30% preferred Friday. To decide which day to hold the workshop, which statistic should the supervisor use? So in order to answer this question, you would need to know the difference between mean, median, mode, and range. So mean is the average. That means that you would take um, each one of these quantities, add them up, and then divide by the total number of items that you just added up to get your average. The median is, look, you're looking for the middle number. So you would take your information, put the numbers in order from least to greatest, and find the middle number. And mode is the number that occurs the most in your data. And of course, again, you would put them in least order from least to greatest, so it'd be easier to locate the mode um, and see which number occurs the most. And then you have range, which is the difference uh, between the um, greatest number and the smallest number. So in this particular case, if you think about this, you want to go with the majority rule. Um, so in this case, you have 20%, 15%, 10%, 25%, and 30%. So if you're trying to go with the majority of the teachers, you would definitely pick 30%. So that the majority is is equivalent to saying the mode or the most. So in this case, it would be mode. Estimate the weight mass of an adult female. So again, you have to know the difference between all of these units. So we have 55 grams, we have pounds, 55 pounds, 55 kilograms, and we have 55 milligrams. Again, anytime you see milligrams, think of pills. Um, kilograms would be large amounts. Pounds as an adult female, 55 pounds is no, no bueno. You would think that individual might have a little condition or might be sick, not trying to be funny, but yeah. 55 pounds is more of a, uh, uh, the weight of a child. 55 grams would be for small amounts. So a large amount for an adult female, 55 kilograms would be the right answer. A bottle of children's cough syrup would most likely have a capacity of eight pints, eight milliliters, eight grams and eight fluid ounces. So in order to answer this question, you just have to know 
um, the difference between all of the units of measure. So eight pints is like equivalent to a gallon. Um, eight milliliters is equivalent to 0 0.03 cups. Eight grams, when you talk about grams, it's usually, um, you speak about grams, it's like measuring a weight, not usually a unit of measure for liquid. So I wouldn't pick grams at all. So we use grams, you're talking about um, weight. And eight fluid ounces, of course, is equivalent to one cup. So when you're talking about um, a bottle of children's cough syrup, the eight fluid ounces is the one that makes the most sense. An eight foot square floor is to be covered with square tiles measuring eight inches on each side. If each tile costs 50 cents, how much will it cost to tile the floor? So I like to start my word problems off with pictures just to see if I get a good understanding. So we have here a floor and it's in the shape of a square. Um, and they said that each side is eight foot. Well, first off, they said it's an eight foot. What you have to know is that all of the sides of a square have the same length. So I'm going to write eight foot, eight feet on each side. And then it says that, um, this, uh, particular floor is going to be covered. This is an indication that you're going to be looking for the area of a shape. Okay, and what is it going to be covered with? It's going to be covered with tiles, and each one of those tiles are eight inches on each side. So the tile is going to be just a little small tile, and because it's in the shape of a square as well, because it says it's a square tile, each side of the tile is also, in this case, eight inches. So I'm going to label that as well. Now, in order to compare these two quantities um, or to merge them together, you need to convert one to, um, you either need to convert your feet to inches or your inches to feet. In this particular case, it's going to be easier for you to convert your feet to inches. So, that conversion looks like this. We know that one foot is equal to 12 inches. So, how many um, inches are in eight feet? is what you want to know. So I'm gonna represent this missing quantity with the variable x, okay? So in order to calculate that, I'm going to do a proportion. I think proportions is just easier to do in this case. So I'm gonna say one foot over 12 inches is equal to eight feet over x. I'm gonna cross multiply and I get x so you're doing cross multiplication, it's just this here. You're going to say x times 1 is equal to 12 times 8. And you get x is equal to 96. And in this case, it's going to be 96 inches. So now I'm going to redraw my um, square floor. So now this picture is now, it's still a square, but instead of eight feet, it's gonna be 96 inches on all the sides. Okay, 96 inches. Okay, so now you need to figure out, well, what is going to be the total area? So I'm gonna erase what I have. It'll be some portion. Let's erase some of this. Okay, so let's figure out the area that we need to be covered. So in order to calculate the area, you have to say 96 times 96. So we got 36 carried to 3, that's 54 plus 3 is 57. Of course, you got your placeholder, then you have 54 again, carry the 5, 81 plus 5 going, is going to get you 86. 
add them together. You get 6, 11, carry the 1. That's going to be 12. So you're working with 92, um, 92,216. So the area for this square is 9216 square inches. Okay? So now you need to figure out, well, how many tiles can I fit in that particular space? So you have to now find the um, area of one tile. So the area of one tile is going to be eight times eight. And in this case, it'll be 64 square inches, okay? So how many 64 square inches can you get out of 9,216 square inches? So let's do our division. So I'm going to start erasing again, so I need space. Erase, erase. Okay. So now we have um, 64 goes into 9,216. That's going to be once 64 here. And it's eight, that's gonna be 28, carry down, bring down the one. Um, let's do some math here, 64, I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna say four. You get 16, that's two, 256. So we'll say that's four times, 256, subtract this, and you get two, five, bring down the six. So oh, this is perfect, so 64 goes into 256 four times. Four times 64 is 256, remainder zero. That's what we want. We like it when it happens like that. So now this is 144 tiles that we need. And it said that each tile costs 50 cents. So we're going to say 144 times 0 0.50 to represent our 50 cents. And we have zero, 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 placeholder, 20. Then that's going to be 22. And that's going to be seven. Add together, zero, zero, two, seven. This is two decimal places. Start here, go to the left. And we're looking at $72. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Class is dismissed.